I want to have a rant about diet because I'm a, I'm a lay person, so I'm not I'm not qualified in diet per se. But I've, a, I've been looking at it and trying it. And one thing I know about myself is I jump full in. You know, it's like so if there's a diet, I'll put myself on it and I'll do it. You know, I won't just go take looked at that one kind of thing. At the moment, I think I've got 16 or is it maybe 17 diets, most of which I've done at some level. You know, so when I went keto, ketogenic, high fat, low carb, or almost no carb, 20 grams of carb, etc. Um, I did that for four months. Yeah, that's how I discovered I was lacto intolerant. You know, lactose intolerant. Sorry, um, uh, because it, it, it massive inflammatory response. I had gout in four joints. You know, like not. This is not a happy time. Not a happy place to be. Um, but I know that myself well enough that I'll jump into it. Right. So I've looked at stuff like I've looked at paleo. Right. Tried paleo. Yeah, I kind of get it. You know, didn't try Atkins. That's the only one I don't think I've actually tried. But it's kind of like paleo without the veg. I think without the berries and stuff. Um, I've tried uh, vegetarian, um, but then when I first did vegetarian, I ate tons of cheese and tons of bread. Right? And now I'm led to believe, and I kind of think this is probably right, we're not designed to do any dairy, you know, so it kind of suits me to be lacto intolerant. So cheese is out. Uh, wheat, I was brought up on wheat, I was brought on white bread, you know, and sugary cups of tea, you know, what chance is amazing I made adulthood. The white bread apparently is really bad, and if you look at it and you go, spell, because that's the original wheat we had in this country, but, but was it? And is it the right thing? And grains, there's the other one. Grains, should you be doing any grains at all, which is a paleo thing? Because it was only 10,000 years ago that we actually came in, discovered that we to get more calories if we boil it, all the toxins go out of it. Right, so I, I think the whole thing's a minefield. So paleo, uh, glycemic load, glycemic index, yeah, it's literally jump on from glycemic uh, index, uh, sorry, glycemic index, then glycemic load. Uh, vegetarian, veganism, uh, frugivore, yeah, fruit only. Right? And well, the argument for that one is that the marks on uh, fruit in the stones actually show that that's what our teeth were grounding. So that's the marks that we've got on our teeth. Yeah, what? Pescatarian, well, vegetarian, but I eat fish. Thermal, that's an old Christopher Walker, big fan of Christopher, I think he's really good. Uh, and I've tried paleo, but that it goes so opposite. He's going, don't have beans and legumes and stuff like that. And a vegetarian one is have your protein from beans and legumes. It, it's killing me. My diet is killing me. Not because I'm doing a bad diet, you know, because I can't work it out. You know, and the, here's my big thing about it. If, like, if one of them was that good, you know, one size fits all, we'd all be on it. If everyone felt amazing on it. Now, I do think there's some really, really obvious ones, you know. Um, without going into tons and tons of research. Cut out refined sugars. There we go. That's not too difficult. Well, actually, it turns out it really is difficult because refined sugars are considered to be more addictive uh, than crack. You know, I, don't, I haven't tried crack, so I can't really compare on that one, but you know, highly, highly addictive, really, really hard to get off. Uh, harder to get off that than it is to get off um, cigarettes. You know, right? So, But if you cut out refined sugars because you get insulin spikes and dops and Right, and they get insulin resistance and it leads to type 2 diabetes and right so cut out refined sugars i think cut out wheat actually because if you look at the wheat that we've got if you look at the wheat we get yeah it's refined and it's got additives and it's got all sorts of bits in it you know so is it the stuff that we were getting along you know many many years ago um that leads me straight into one of the best things to do is avoid icides herbicides pesticides insecticides plasticides Right, so I say that we are, if you're in the baby boomers, that's born 1946-64, I'd say it's so expand it both ways, up to 1970, say, 1942. If you're in that broad spectrum, we're the generation of experimentation. Yeah, not because we had the 60s and LSD, but actually because we are experimented on. And my personal opinion is, I don't think they know, and I don't think they know now quite what the effects of them are. When x-rays first came out, everyone was getting x-rays all over them. 20 years later, they're going, whoa, real sorry about that. Yeah, the x-ray dose you were getting then is now considered dangerous. Right? And I think that's what's happened with herbicides, pesticides, and all the other bits that go with it. Um, so I think you avoid refined sugars as best you can. Yeah, stay away from uh, insecticides, pesticides, etc. Right? Which means you need to look at going organic. Organic 20 years ago was almost non-existent. Now there's more and more places actually going that way. Uh, hydrate, right? But actually don't hydrate from the tap. <laughs> because you've got all the bits and pieces in the tap, you know, get a proper water filter, you know, like, and there's lots of them on the market. Depends how much you want to, you've got and how much you want to spend. Uh, then, it, of course, you've got to avoid bottled water, uh, plastic bottles, because they're phytoestrogens, you know, like, so they mimic estrogen. 
uh, which is not good for boys that don't want to get growing here. The whole thing is just stuck. You know, I'm just I'm exhausted by the whole thing. Just trying to, trying to stay well and healthy and stuff like that. So that's my, my advice to anybody would be, right, get clean water, get lots of it. Yeah, uh, avoid the uh, eyesights, which means go organic. Yep, pay a bit more, but you'll eat a bit less. Get out in the air, do some exercise. Exercise is the biggest single contributor to your health and wellness, mental, emotional, osteoporosis, gastrointestinal time, your general well-being. Right, it's the single biggest thing you can actually do. Find something you actually like. Ideally, you need to do something that's fairly intense. All right, you know, so there's some real basic bits you can actually do. Uh, that's my rant over, I think, for the moment. Oh, ultimately, I think what it is, is I think you need to trust your intuition. I think you need to go back to trusting your intuition. So at the moment, I'm vegetarian, but I still have eggs. Organic free range, obviously. But uh, I might have some meat, and if I want to have some meat, I'll have organic meat. And maybe I'll have some meat, you know, like that month, I'll have it once or twice. We weren't brought up eating meat four or five times a day, which is what most people are doing. Now, we weren't brought up with deep fried. We weren't brought up to graze. You know, we, if you look at 1940s and 50s films, any country, like, you know, America, UK, right, no fatties. No fatties, because they ate, and they didn't eat again till later. Uh, put on top of that, portion size since the 40s has almost quadrupled to what we get now. Uh, so there's a few factors, right? So we are the generation of experimentation. It's being experimented on us with ideas and concepts. Um, even down to when I was in advertising, some adverts are produced not to get you to buy it, to get you to open your fridge. So you already bought it, now they're gonna get you to consume it. Then you need to go and buy some more. What people probably won't remember if you're younger is in the 80s, they introduced the, you, it was com become mandatory, compulsory to put a law through that ingredients had to be put on packaging and tins. The big um, food companies, boy did they fight that. Took a couple of years for that to actually get through. In the same way, if you look at how smoking was once perpetuated, as actually being beneficial for you and good for you and doctors smoked all right so we're in a lot of confusion and my, ultimately I'm going it's your intuition now all right and I've done a couple of videos about how you can actually enhance and train your intuition we've all got it but we want to get it where we don't have it um, just appear and manifest accidentally you know you get that moment where you go something not right with this place this room this person yeah, the job offer or whatever, you get a moment of it. So there's a couple of things you can do. I've shown, I've, I've done the one about this, this bit and this bit, and I've done one called Sway. Uh, I think I posted that the other day. Um, I think the more you look at that and trust your intuition, then you'll actually be a lot better. But the obvious bit, stay away from sugars, eyesights, you know, pesticides, etc. cetera. Yeah, um, um, do some exercise, yeah, eat organic, yeah, um, hydrate. You know, by, you know, you're well on the way there, actually. Oh, one other one, actually. Don't hang out with toxic people. Toxic people will suck the life out of you just by being in the same room. And some of them might even be the people closest to you. Yeah, it doesn't mean they're doing it deliberately, the people close to you. It just means that you've got better energy. They want some of it. So it's an unconscious, subconscious thing. Have I met people and been around people where by the time you finish, and you leave the meeting, party, whatever it is, you kind of go, whoa, I'm tired. You don't know why you're tired. Right, that's why. Right, so it's a little thing that I'm going to share at one point called cutting cords. I've done it. I know it works. I've given it to other people. I know it works. I didn't invent it. It was given to me by some people that are kind of like very spiritual. So that's it. That's my rant over for today. Do with it as you see fit.